two champions. This episode of IFW Extra is dedicated to everyone that we've lost this year. We've lost many great people, but we've also lost some very excellent wrestling minds. And one more time, we'd love to remind you all that no matter what you're going through, for the sake of those around you and yourself, we all love you. And we hope that you have a safe and a happy new year. Thank you. Hello there, and welcome to the first ever episode of IFW Extra. Of course, this is the voice of H.J. Stewart, and no, I am not coming to you live whatsoever. I am actually sitting in the IFW studio of the Empire Wrestling Network building. Right now, I'm sitting here. It is the holidays. It is coming to an end. We're just finishing up some work here and uh, we decided to put together this little video here from IFW to put out more content and to help build on what you may see here on IFW. First and foremost we'd like to start off this extra show here with talking about gold. It's no secret that IFW is a starting ground at home to some of the greatest competitors that are known to the Empire and CEW community and a select few of these competitors come in the form of our champions. Ever since I've been since since we've had this pressing feeling within us that we truly need to innovate and change the design of our IRW championships. So without further ado, here are the brand new IFW champions and the people who hold them. First up, we have our IFW Women's Champion Megan Foster. Megan Foster's been a part of IFW for just two years now, a very short time. But in those two years, she has joined up with OWF Loaded Wrestling and has won their women's championship. She's joined up with SPW2K, and she just recently and is currently the SPW2K Women's Champion. She's been a part of both CAW All-Stars, and just recently she joined up with MAW alongside our other IFW stars. At IFW Saints and Sinners, she did the near impossible by defeating four other women in a battle royale. In the same night, she went one-on-one -on -one with the former IFW Women's Champion, Alex Hernandez, to win that very title. Next up, we have the IFW Tag Team Champions, the Irish Kings, Kavana and Hendricks. The Irish Kings have been part of IFW for the very beginning, and I personally have had the pleasure of seeing both of these monolithic men grow from, from the beginning of their career to now. They're the only two-time IFW Tag Team Champions along with the fact that they are the first ever IFW Tag Team Champions, both times defeating the now disbanded team of the Undead Angels. They won the first time at IFW Top of the Mountain and just recently at IFW New Enemies. At IFW Santa Sinners, however, they defeated Odyssey and Richard Harvey, but not without a little bit of help. And now for the international champion, Mike Blood, or should I say, the IFW Intercontinental Champion, Mike Blood. First and foremost, Mike Blood is without a doubt an Empire legend as he and Kyle Thomas were in the beginning of OWF on the air, kicking off some of the Empire's greatest moments in history. He's been a part of some of the wildest matches and moments the Empire has ever seen, and is no doubt a shoe-in to be a future Empire Hall of Famer, with everything that he's done both in and out of the ring, as Michael Moon when he joined up with the Platinum Players, and the man he is known as today, Mike Blood. And now, of course, a titling question. The IFW Intercontinental title. Everyone here at IFW felt that there was some redundancy with having two titles that both meant the world over. So as a collective decision, we decided to bring in a title that would truly represent where you come from in that continent. We felt by doing this, we could open up a little bit more personal desire and competition amongst the whole roster. We cannot and will not ever forget our IFW World Championship title. And of course, it is held by one of the greatest Empire influences that we have ever known. Quite possibly one of the biggest CW commu community creators as a whole as well. Of course, I'm talking about the Empire legend, Hypnosis. Hypnosis is arguably the greatest Empire and call creator, owner, commentator, and performer that has been seen here. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years 
have all been put into this very to this very MWN network. And for its growth, it undoubtedly a lot of that credit goes toward hypnosis. He's been a part of MMW, TMT, NBW, SPW, SPW, 2K, OWF, UVW, the list goes on. What's even crazier is that he's been the owner of some of these shows as, as well. Only recently has he shown up in IFW at IFW New Enemies in a very shocking debut laying down the gauntlet against former champion Mr. IFW as Bjorn. And at Saints and Sinners, he proved that he was a fighting champion by taking out Mass Bjorn in a rematch for the IFW Championship. It's safe to say that not only with this new title design and hypnosis on top, we're all excited to see what the future holds for the IFW World Championship. I, for one, am super excited that we finally get to unveil these new titles. I mean, only on IFW episode 21 did you get to see Megan Foster walk around with the brand new IFW Women's Championship. She got a cave against the skull by the former champion, and that's going to be something that's going to be developing here on IFW. Hopefully, we can get some answers as to why Alex Hernandez did what she did, but you cannot control what people do. I say it all the time. But up next, we have a match for you. A little bit of a feature presentation. It's not the only presentation as well. Up next, we have the Viper taking on a brand new look in Roy and Jalee.
Without a doubt, it is very surprising to see Roy Angelique kind of turn back into his old ways when he first started here in IFW. Maybe it's not the best things for the superstars on the roster, but hey, it will be interesting to see how Roy Angelique develops, especially under being reverted by that wild-looking guy that has been showing up ever since IFW New Enemies. I don't know what his case is, but hey, we'll, we're looking forward to the future. Speaking of the future, one of IFW's newest signings in Trey Jeter in our partnership with SPW2K, he took the time out to record a quick message in response to our question of what do you look to gain here in IFW and as a whole for your career in the CAW. This was Trey Jeter's response, and we'll be right back after it to get into the main event. So, everybody wants to know what I'm looking forward to doing. And I have done, but in the community as a whole in the future. My goal in IWF is to capture every single title that IFW has here, from mid card to tag team to the world title itself. That is my goal here. But my goal in the community is not only for my name to be known throughout the community. But for people to know, I am one of the best at what I do. In this ring and outside of this ring, I want people to know that I am the best at what I do. I'm not just some pretender that some of y'all may think that I am, but that I am one of the best in ring talents and the coolest guys that you'll ever meet. So it'll take a lot for some people to realize that. You know, fine with that. I gotta keep working, keep grinding, keep focused mentally and physically on my goal. And that's that number one spot, like my name was Ludacris. But we shall see how everything pans out, cause 2020 has been a crazy year. Now let's see what 2021 holds for the Carolina Hunter trade here. You dig? Very strong words and a powerful message by Trey Jeter. We all look forward to seeing what he can do into the coming new year. Well, with everything out of the way, I would like to thank you all one more time for tuning in to IFW Extra. And it is now time to show you the main. You and I are one and the same. Although we both have very different approaches. We both know what the hand of betrayal feels like. To have our loved ones turn their back on us, and what's seemingly so, the world as well. And now there's another connection that we both share. It's that the black bird has chosen the both of us. You see, with Jaylon and Ash Cuervo, I chose them myself. In the beginning, she instructed me to look out for followers. 
look out for people who would be willing to join. And by simply asking those two who have slowly had their life in shambles, they joined, looking for a better future, and thus they will. With Rivette, she came to me. She was willing to do anything and everything to better herself and to get her title back. And in due time, she will. And then there's you and Kim. She chose you. She must have seen within you what she saw in me. She has given you and I her grace, her power, her love. You have been marked by your past, but you will be forged by the future. You and I are one and the same, Enkel. And I'm glad you see it the same way. Praise the Blackbird. Very strong words and a powerful message by Tree. Hirabashi Ryu versus Mateo Andres.
And just like that, that concludes the first ever episode of IFW Extra. Thank you all for watching and I hope you tune in more for the IFW Extras and the main show of IFW. Please don't forget to check out our brother sister shows of Loaded OWF Wrestling, SPW2K, and all of our affiliates over at CAW All-Stars and MAW. Of course, we cannot go without thanking AWR for making such great work and going into the future of indiana wrestling as a whole deathmatch wrestling as a whole we want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to ifw here tonight and we hope that you have an absolutely happy new year this is hj stewart and good night